Hi everyone, it's Laugh of the Day, number 293 for October 19th, 2016. I'm Dave Berman, host of Daily Laughers, bringing you inspiration to create a daily laughter practice. I've been laughing every day for years, and every day this year I've made a video to show you different ways to laugh and to introduce you to people around the world who practice intentional laughter. And we do this because the mind and body don't know the difference between laughing at humor and choosing to laugh. We get a lot of health and social and spiritual benefits from doing it as an exercise in a form of self-care. And so it's healthy for us and it has a positive impact on people around us. So that's why we do it and you should too. Joining me today from Melbourne, right? Melbourne, Australia? Yes. Yes, okay. This is Roz Ben Moshe. It's great to see you today. Thank you for laughing with me. Thank you for having me. I've been yeah. very excited for this moment. I knew even early on this year I'm going to be one of your daily laughers. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so you have a, a bunch of interesting things that I would like for you to share with people about the research that you've done about laughter, like real science about the benefits of laughing, and also your recovery from cancer and how that has led to what you share through your writing and, and your laughter work. So we'll, we'll get to that after you take us through some of your, your favorite ways to laugh and feel good. Sounds good to me. All right. What's I'm next? I'm Kathy. Well, should we kick start it with the great Australian laugh, which is <laughs> Australians have this love affair with their, with their lawns and their gardens, <laughs> and they don't seem to believe in early, um, late sort of, you know, sleep-ins on a Sunday, they get out their lawnmower and um, they're generally not the ones that start first off. And so if we can pretend that we've got um, a Victor mower, because they are the most popular ones in Australia, Australia. Um, and the way that it works is is that you, you've got to pull them, you know, that, that starter, yeah, and um, it, right? obviously it's laughter-powered, I mean, obviously. Oh. So it goes like this, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, we might just power up just once more, okay? I can sleep open in the So that's the lawnmower laugh, but you call it the great Australian laugh? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, how else do you like to laugh? What else should we show people today? Well, we can... Have you, have you had anyone... Actually, I was just thinking the, the lap, you know, to do laughter laps. That's actually one of my favorites. But um, I don't know if you've had that. Like you swimming? Yeah, and that's also talking about Australia. Um, and you essentially just, you know, we actually did this in the dialysis ward. It was one of the more surreal moments. Swimming around a dialysis ward, um, breaststroke or doggy paddle or, you know, freestyle. And it's awfully fun. So let's, let's give that a go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> much energy so when I was recovering from from um, the bowel cancer I actually would uh, integrate a, a regular 
deep breathing and smiling mindfulness practice. So we could we can do that if you like. Okay, show us how it goes. Okay, so I won't do bearing in time. I won't do the full on relaxation. We're just going to start. Just um, I invite you to close your eyes and just take a, a couple of nice deep breaths in and then out and once more in and out. And then I'd like you to place a smile on your face. It might help you to think of a time when you are unconditionally loved or that everything in the world, your world was going as well as it possibly could. And just sit with that smile on your face, noting how it makes you feel with this beautiful smile, how your lips feel, how your eyes feel, how your cheeks feel. And just breathe this smile in and out. This beautiful love and life affirming smile. And this time as you breathe this smile in, as you exhale, I'd like you to imagine that every cell, every tissue, every fibre, every muscle of your body is smiling right back at you. A full bodied smile. And note how it makes you feel. And know that at any time of the day, you can change your whole physiology, the whole way that you feel, just by placing a smile on your face. So just sit with that smile, breathing it in and out. And then when you're ready, if you just open your eyes. That's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful smile. Yes, your <laughs> eyes can be open. So just sitting with that and you can really elongate that process. It's such sure. a beautiful thing to do. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's basically a, a hypnotic induction. It's, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> hypnosis and meditation overlap quite a lot. And so the process of guiding somebody through that is, is hypnotic, basically. Yeah, that's great. That was very pleasant. Thank you for that. So that was, that was, it, it sounds like that still is part of your daily life, but that was something that you began to cultivate in your recovery from bowel cancer. Is that right? That's correct. So yes. where, where else did that take you in your journey back to wellness? You mentioned that you have a book. Yeah. Oh yes, that's true. So during that time, yes, I was I was writing journals, um, a journal, and and very early on into the writing, I, I realized as much as I was writing it for myself, you know, laugh, you know, writing is therapy just as much as laughter is. I was actually writing to an imaginary readership, or my future readership, I should yeah, say. Yeah. So um, I would integrate sort of very, you know, my own sort of personal philosophies, empowering tips. Um, various sort of healing modalities that I found beneficial and um, yeah would would invite um, this this um, future readership to sort of contemplate on some of the issues that I had been posing in, in, in each entry. So yes, that's that's really so the working title is Laughing at Cancer, My Healing Journey to Promote Yours. So it's a it's a really interactive read and I and um, yeah very much a it's a it's a memoir but it's also very much a healing handbook. Well, that sounds very appealing to me. I'd like to read that, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers would as well. So I, I know that writing is not only something that you've done in this sort of self-reflective way, that you've had other writing published and that you're essentially a professor. So that's what led you to doing laughter research, too. Can you kind of summarize for us what you've studied and what you've found about laughter? Sure. Um, all good things. <laughs> That's the summation. Um, so I suppose there's been three. There's been three demographics of, of um, people that I've worked with. I, I used my students as, as my lab rats, and um, I did a, um, a laughter research project with with one of my students. And we, for example, did a four week. It was just four weeks. Um, once a week. Um, over the four weeks leading up to final year exams, we ran a laughter 
um, laughter yoga program for students and we measured uh, psychological well-being, psychological distress and fatigue and it was amazing. I mean, you know, fatigue went down, psychological distress was, you know, really tapered off and feelings of psychological well-being, you know, improved. So that was really fantastic. And, and, no and anecdotally, yeah. a lot of the students said, you know, they found that after the laughter session, they could actually get on with what they, you know, their work and things that they sort of had mental blocks about. So it really helped free their minds. So that was beautiful. Second thing was um, working with a colleague at my university, at La Trobe University. We ran um, what was called the Laugh Out Loud project in aged care, where for six weeks we um, took um, a few groups of um, people living in residential aged care facilities. We measured blood pressure and heart rate before and after each session and um, various other wellbeing indicators and, and happiness indicators. And beautifully, again, very, very pleased that um, we, we noted that blood pressure dropped slightly and there was definite improvement in happiness and in psychological well-being and you could see there was a lot more chatter and interaction between residents which was which was great and then we actually took it to the next level um, and trained staff in 35 uh, aged care facilities across Victoria and I trained over about 120 staff to run laughter yoga activities for their residents and we had you know kookaburra clubs starting up <laughs> and we had various laughter clubs and you know you know, there's only one of me, just like there's only one of you. So in terms of really trying to create a more sustainable model to roll out laughter in a, in a more meaningful and, and, and broader way, that, that was a great way I, I found to actually, you know, train staff and then they go on and, and do it, which, which is fantastic. And the third project that um, I was involved with was, um, was with my university, another university, um, and also Merv Neal, and we ran uh, laughter yoga or laughter therapy, as we called it, um, for dialysis patients. So that was three times a week, and we measured things like lung function, uh, well-being indicators, and um, a, a blood pressure. We couldn't measure because it's artificially simulated when they're on the dialysis machines. Um, but it's really interesting. The changes you see in people, honestly, after after um, a few of the sessions, I was, it was like I saw like a light switch on in someone's eyes. You know, one one man who'd received dialysis, I can guarantee you that there was this brightness in his eyes that just wasn't there at the you know before we'd started. So, yeah, lots of lots that we didn't measure that, but it was just a beautiful thing to to observe. Well, are the, the results of any of these studies published? So there, the results from the dialysis studies have been published, I think in a paper called Seminars in Dialysis and also uh, some complementary medicine um, journal. The Laugh Out Loud um, results, are, it's, it's, it will be, it's in the process of, of going through publication. Um, so that's that should be out sort of in the next few months, and the one for the students um, I haven't published yet. Okay, well, I look forward to hearing that this is all widely available. Tell us uh, your website and where people can connect with you and find ways to laugh with you and learn more about you. Sure. Well, I've got my Facebook page, like everybody, so that's Laugh Life wellbeing programs and then my website is www.laughlife l-a-u-g-h-l-i-f-e dot com dot a-u alright great well Roz thank you so much for your work I know that we need more research about laughter even though there's already a lot we need more um, and of course we need more inspiring stories of people like you who are getting healthy in natural ways and including laughter and smiling and breathing and mindfulness is a part of it. So I'm glad that you're still here to tell us about all this and show us your smile and show us your laugh. And for our viewers, please subscribe on YouTube to Daily Laughers. Join our Facebook group and we will keep bringing you more incredible people from all over the world who love to laugh every single day in another Laugh of the Day video. Roz, it was great to meet you. Thank you. So lovely meeting you. Thank you. Lots of love and laughter. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.